I'll be reading from the book of Nehemiah. Hear what God's Spirit is saying to you. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord, and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Be quiet, for this day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink and to send portions and to make great rejoicing, because they had understood the words that were declared to them. Here ends the reading of words that give us insight on God. May God grant us wisdom and courage for interpretation. pray with me. Holy and loving God, help us to recognize your presence in our lives and to give thanks for those times when we can feel your presence palpably, whenever we are ready to celebrate. God, help us to bring a spirit of joy into this world, because God knows this world needs a bit more joy. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every one of our hearts be pleasing to you and acceptable in your sight, O oh God, for you are our rock and you are our Redeemer. Amen. Laissez le bon temps rouler! Laissez le bon temps rouler! Oh, we can do that better. Ready? Laissez le bon temps rouler! Let the good times roll. But in this church, can we really have fun in church? You know, I remember being at a denominational gathering a few years ago, and, you know, the presenter asked us what worship ought to be like. And as you can imagine, in a denomination that lets people interpret things for themselves, there were a lot of different opinions about that. But I remember one guy in particular, he looked up at the presenter, and this guy was a part of a church that was quickly dying. They were maybe 20 people soaking wet. And he looked at the presenter and he said, worship ought to be solemn and it ought to be reverent. And he said it just like that. And I understand where he's coming from. You know, we, we ought to come with, uh, with our best selves. We ought to come ready to honor God. And yet not every day is Good Friday, is it? I mean, isn't the message of our faith that we don't have to live in Good Fridays? that Easter is coming and that we are Easter people. Isn't that the message of our faith? And so I love the thought of celebrating because worship ought to be a celebration. You know, this is a day of celebration, our Fat Sunday service. And Fat Tuesday, Mardi Gras, has traditionally been a day where people cooked up all the fat in the house and ate it before it was time to eat a little simpler in Lent. And this was especially true during times before refrigeration. They wanted to eat everything up, hence the name Fat Tuesday, often in the form of pancakes. <laughs> and then they would eat a little simpler during Lent. So I know that we all have come from different traditions, and maybe some of us have grown up celebrating Lent, and for others of us, this is a new thing. But 
on Wednesday, we will begin the season of Lent by putting ashes on our forehead. And if you were outside before the service started, you may have seen me light the palm branches, palm branches that we wave jubilantly on Palm Sunday, to turn those into ashes. Those are the ashes we'll use to mark our foreheads. It's a reminder that life is cyclical, that life is fragile, and that we ought to appreciate it while we can. Today is a day of celebration before Lent, Fat Sunday, and I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Are you ready? You don't have to keep this a secret, though, if you don't want to. Celebration, rejoicing, is biblical. It's biblical. I love it. So today we heard a scripture lesson from the book of Nehemiah. Have any of you spent a lot of time with the book of Nehemiah? I'm assuming that probably a lot of you haven't, but if you have, wonderful. Here's what you need to know. The ancient Israelites were living in their country, and another country decided that they wanted to lay claim to that country, and they went and they took it over. Seen anything like that in the news recently? And so the ancient Israelites were taken from their land, and they were forced to live for decades in Babylon. And they finally got to return home, and we find out what their lives were like in the books of Ezra and Nehemiah. They begin to rebuild. In the book of Ezra, we begin to see it. And one of my favorite stories in the book of Ezra, maybe you remember this, is they look at the temple that was once there, the place where they had once gone to worship and and to rejoice in God's presence, and they look and it's turned to rubble, and they start to lay the foundations of a brand new temple, and they reside that they're going to build it even bigger and better than it was before. And they stand there, it's a day of celebration, and the priests are all wearing their finest vestments, and the trumpeter starts to play, and the cymbals start to clang, and people start to sing and rejoice and it's a wonderful celebration and then there's a whole other group of people who begin to cry do you remember this story they start to weep they they even begin to wail and these are the people who remember what the temple had been like before perhaps some of you can relate to that feeling as you look at our friendship hall wang And perhaps some of you are filled with joy and celebration, and perhaps there are others of you who have some tears to shed for the place that you loved that is not there in the same way anymore. But in this story, they're standing at the temple, the foundation, they're celebrating. One group is shouting for joy, the other is wailing, and their cries mingle together until they are one loud roar. And they begin to build as a people united with all of those mixed emotions. And so we hear about that in the book of Ezra. And then we move to the book of Nehemiah. And they're beginning to build the city walls. You remember that in the ancient world, it was important to have walls like this. It protected the city. You wanted to keep invaders out. And so the walls have been built all around the city. There's another day of celebration. This time, Ezra stands up on a high platform and unrolls the scroll for the law and begins to read. And then the Levites, people who are learned, who can read and write, and they work in the temple, they're familiar with the law, they go around and they start to interpret it for the people around them. It's kind of like an ancient Bible study. And so he's up there reading, people are interpreting, and the people who are there looking all around, probably overcome with emotions by seeing this place return to its former glory, begin to cry. Once again, some of them even sad tears. And Nehemiah looks out, and he sees the people crying. And Nehemiah was a a high official on the, the Persian court. And he looks out, and he says... Stop everything. You know what? This is not a day for crying. It's a day for celebrating. And then he says, I want all of you to go and run around. I want you to go home and I want you to find the best, fattiest foods that you can, the richest food. Literally in Hebrew it says, go eat the fat. He says, go get the sweet wine. And if people don't have enough, I want you to share it all. And they said, 
Don't cry. I want you to sing. I want you to dance. And I want you to celebrate. Because today is a good day. And we need to celebrate what has gone behind us, what we have left behind us. And we need to prepare for what's coming in. And in order to do that, we got to celebrate today. So let's celebrate. He said, let's have a fat Sunday of sorts. Let's say le bon temps roule. Let's celebrate. Let the good times roll. And the people begin to do that. They begin to share all of their things. They begin to go home and eat the fatty food and drink the sweet wine. And they dance and they have a wonderful time as they prepare for what is to come. Today is a day of celebration. Today is a day of rejoicing. Now I know that there's much going on in the world that feels heavy. I know that there's likely much going on in our lives that feels heavy. And yet, sometimes it does us good to let go and let loose, doesn't it? I mean, there are things that we can control, and, and the things that we can control, we, we ought to work for it. If, if there are things in our lives that need to change, that we have some power over, some control over, we need to work for that. Those things in our world, the praying with our feet that I was talking about earlier, we need to continue to do that. But the things that are out of our control, does it really do us any good to worry about them? To sit and stew over them? Let me give you an example. I was talking with a friend a couple of weeks ago about a situation that, that was going on in our lives, and you know, I said, you know, I don't think we need to dwell on this. And he said, man, that's denial. I said, it's not denial. I said, you recognize the situation is the way it is, but it didn't do you any good to sit there and worry about it because it's not going to change it. I said, you know, I am thinking about my life and all those things that were out of my control that I sat and worried about. I'm, I'm trying to think if there was a single one that was made more positive by me worrying about it. And I can't come up with a single example. Sometimes it does us good to let go of those things that we cannot control, to turn them over to God, and to rejoice in the things that God has done and is doing in our lives. And whenever we can focus on that, that helps us get through almost anything, doesn't it? Even if times are bad in our world, even if things are difficult in our lives, we are more able to get through that if we can feel God's presence with us. And we can focus on those blessings that we have in our lives. I'm not talking about denial, but I'm talking about looking for those blessings that we have have in our lives and giving thanks to God that we've got them. Amen. Today, we've got a lot to be thankful for. And one of the main things we've got to be thankful for that I can see is that we have each other. You know, it's been three years since we've been able to go through Lent together. The last Lent we went through together was in the spring of 2019. So we got a lot to celebrate today just by the fact that we are together. Because this time last year, we weren't together. This time two years ago, we were getting ready to spend a lot of time apart. But today, we are together. And it is a day of celebrating. So friends, let's let go. Let's let loose. Let's say le bon temps roule. Let the good times roll. And may that inspire us to bring a little bit of joy into this world that so desperately needs it. May it be so. Amen. Amen.